Greg Hill. And it will come in three versions, one of which is full electric. Here with more, we've got Bill Pepper, who is the Maserati America's head. And also riding with us for the chat, we've got Yahoo Finance's Pro Supermanian. Great to have you here with us today, Bill, and thanks for taking some time here with us. A big announcement today, whether consumer trends or company data, what led Maserati to leaning further into the SUV segment of the automotive market? Well, thank you for having me, first of all. Um, as we know, the SUV uh, proliferation in the U.S. continues. 80% of vehicles sold in the U.S. last year were SUVs, and that only continues. Our full-size SUV, the Levante, was Maserati's top seller last year with about 60% of our sales volume. And as we see this continual shift to SUVs, the biggest opportunity is the luxury midsize SUV segment, very competitive segment. It's the fastest growing in North America with nearly one in three luxury vehicles sold in that segment. Our all new Maserati Gracale allows Maserati to compete where the market is with two SUVs, the Levante and the all new Gracale, firmly positioning Maserati as a quintessential luxury performance SUV brand. We've been known about with our cars, but, but SUV is something that the two SUV lineup will allow us to, uh, to further capitalize on. Hey, Bill Pross here, good to see you again. I'm curious about the, the EV version of Ricali. That's the one we sort of are very interested to hear about. What kind of specs can you tell about that model and, and what will it be in showrooms? Well, what we've committed is that by 2025, first off with the Gracali, there are three trims that are coming out. Uh, the first two trims, the GT and the Modena, feature a two liter four cylinder with a mild hybrid system, a 48 volt mild hybrid, which maximizes power with efficiency. At the top of the range is a three liter twin turbo Natuno derived engine that delivers 523 horsepower zero to 60 time in 3.6 seconds and a top speed of 177 miles an hour like the one behind me. Uh, as far as a full battery electric version, we've committed to bring that out about a year after we start with the ICE variants, which will be later this year, or early fall. And as far as a brand, what we've said is uh, last week even, we uh, said that by 2025, we would have an electric version of all of our Maseratis in the lineup. And by 2030, which is a long way away admittedly, uh, we'll have a full electric range, and that will be exclusive what we sell at Maserati's electric vehicles. Hey, Bill, so you guys had a great 2021 sales up over 40%. But what are your clients sort of telling you about this EV transformation, the whole Dare Ford program that Stellantis has? Do they really want these EV cars now? Because they're, 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 they're content to buy traditional ice-powered or gas-powered cars right now. Well, that's a good question, Praz. And, and that's why we've made dual investments. We put R&D into ICE, like the new Natuno engine that's in the Trofeo version of the Gracale, but we've also made commitments and investments in full electrification. And our philosophy is we're going to let the customer decide what they want and at the adoption curve uh, that, that, that they'll, that they'll you know, action, right, whether they want an ICE or an electric. Um, we, we've been less uh, aggressive in saying, um, in the short term that we're going to move to a full electrified space. So that's, that remains to be seen. As I said, 20, 30 is a long ways away. I think we're going to have to see how, how things materialize in a very fluid environment, quite frankly. That fluid environment has been difficult, especially for other auto manufacturers who have seen some of their wait lists start to pile up and people making those reservations for either more hybrid or more electric vehicles, as we've seen searches skyrocket, especially given some of the higher energy prices that consumers are incurring right now. All that considered on the supply chain front, how has Maserati been able to navigate this so that you do stay on top of the roadmap and the trajectory uh, and really on track to deliver? Sure. Well, one of the benefits of being at Maserati is that we are at the top of the chain in, in the, um, the Stellantis uh, organization, which was uh, formed last year. So 13 different brands. Maserati is the only global luxury brand. And with that comes the commitment from the top management of Stellantis to provide resources, including uh, chip supply and other components, to make sure that we have the, the, the supply we need. So we really haven't been affected by, by chip shortages at Maserati, and that's what allowed us to last year grow almost 50% with the existing uh, range that we have. Bill Pepper, who is the Maserati America's head 
Uh, and thank you so much for joining us here today to break that down. Also, Yahoo Finance's own Pro Supermanian here for the chat. Awesome work that you and the team are doing. We'll have to check back in later on to see how those deliveries are coming as well. Appreciate it, Bill.